Hey everyone, it's Ken with Ken's Creations. Well today for my PPBN Designs project, I am going to make a frozen themed wall plaque. So what I'm using for this today is some spray paint, blue and white. I have a wood plaque that I got from Hobby Lobby. And for the first time I am trying out, I'm sure some of you have heard it, the Square One Masterpiece. Uh, it is a printable uh, material. It's an adhesive fabric which is nice because it's safe and eco-friendly and it's an alternative to vinyl. But I'm really excited to try this product because it's um, equivalent to a printable vinyl but a much better quality. Um, so I want to try this product out and see how it works for this wall plaque. So we're going to go ahead and give this product a review during this video as well and see how it does. So let's go ahead and get our board sprayed and get the project going. So the first step of our project is to go ahead and paint our wall plaque. Now I got the plaque at Hobby Lobby. It was $9.99 and I used a 40% off coupon because I never pay full price at Hobby Lobby. And the reason I went with this wall plaque is I really liked how it um, kind of had it, the bulging on each side of it. it. gave me a little bit more room for my design. Um, for the color, I am using a nice blue for snow. And I always make sure to get a paint and primer double coverage because I am not a patient person. So I don't want to prime it and then paint it and then paint it again and make sure I got a good coverage. So for me, it's worth spending a little extra money to get a nicer quality. So I'm going to go ahead and spray paint this and then we will go ahead and get going to the next step of our project. All right, put those masks on before you paint unless you want to get high. I don't condone getting high. Don't do that. That was not a funny joke. Drug abuse is a very serious subject. So I want to show you how I made the snowflake template for our plaque. Um, there's a few things we need to do or get in order to make this plaque. The first thing is we need to get our template for the plaque. Now whenever I buy a plaque, I always look for the template from the manufacturer of the plaque. So I got my plaque at Hobby Lobby and it on the outside of the package it said it was a Demis Products. So I went to their website which is demisproducts.com and I went to the plaques and essentially all I did is I scrolled through until I found my plaque. Um, so I believe it is on the fifth page or the fourth page. And all I'm really doing is I'm taking the plaque itself and I'm going to go ahead and uh, put it on my desktop. And then we're going to, there's my plaque right there. So I'm going to go ahead and save this image to my desktop. So I'm just right clicking and hitting save. We're going to need this to import into our silhouette, silhouette design software. The next thing we need to do is download our Snowflake set. And I've already brought it up here. If you go to the Silhouette Online Studio, it is in the Echo Park collection. Um, and it's just the Snowflake set. And I used these three guys right here. Once we have those three things, we're going to go ahead and bring up our Silhouette Studio software. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring this plaque into our studio. And it's going to be really tiny, which is fine. First thing we're going to do is we're going to bring it up to 9 by 13 because that's the size of the plaque. So it is 13 inches wide and it's 9 inches high. And then we're going to hit enter and it's going to make it pretty big. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to here to the trace window. We're going to select trace area, which is this blue thing here. We're going to draw a big box around our whole plaque here. And it's going to kind of put yellow in it. What we're going to do is we're going to see where it says high pass filter. We're going to uncheck mark that. And down here on threshold, we're going to bring that all the way up until you see your whole plaque in yellow. Once I see that my plaque is this bright yellow, up here where it says trace outer edge, I'm going to click that. Now I can move this picture of the plaque out of the way. And just like that, I have my plaque. And so there's a good template for the plaque. Now. I don't want my template to be 
this big. So I want it to be a little bit smaller. I want it to be about 11 inches wide. So I'm going to come up here to the offset option, which is the square inside of a square. I'm going to do an internal offset, and I'm going to do it at about an inch. And um, this just keeps the same form, so that way I don't have to worry about um, coming up with another template. So once I'm up to an inch, I can hit Apply, and then I can get rid of this outer template. And there is the template we're going to work from. Once I have this template, I'm good to go into my library and find my snowflakes. So I'm going to do a keyword search. And there is my snowflake set. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. And I'm probably going to uh, make a duplicate of these because you're going to need a lot of these. So I just hit duplicate a whole bunch of times and that's going to give you as many as you need to work with it. And then I'll just kind of move them around here. And then really, this part's kind of up to you how you want to do it. Um, you have to ungroup them, of course. And then the thing I noticed is you do have to group each individual snowflake back together. So once you've ungrouped it, you have to go back and group the snowflakes together. If not, all the pieces won't move. But really, at this point, you kind of move the snowflakes where you like them. Um, so I move this guy right here. And then I moved... See, like right there, you can see I just moved that center of that snowflake because I forgot to group him. So we're going to draw a box around him. Group. And then I'm going to move this guy here. I'm going to move this big guy right here. And then really, um, whatever pattern you like, uh, there's no rhyme or reason to my madness. I just kind of make whatever pattern I like. Um, you're going to go around the whole perimeter of this. So you're going to go around the whole um, that you've already done. And I'm going to continue to do that. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to show you the next step once this is done. guys so once you have all your snowflakes around your border like so and you like kind of how it looks and once again I told you um, it's however you want it. it's whatever you know fancy or plain as you want but once you got what you like you're gonna draw a big box around this and then you're going to right click and you're gonna hit weld and what that's going to do is it's gonna take away all of the inside and as you can see it leaves you with this snowflake um, around it. Now as you can see there's some little pieces down here. If you don't want those um, you can get rid of those by right clicking and hitting release compound path and that will bring up um, just these individual ones and then you can slowly just kind of go in there and get rid of these little things so that way when your vinyl cuts you don't have all of these. So now we have our uh, main template here. So at this point, really all we need to do is size it. So I'm going to get rid of all these tiny little things in here because I just don't want to deal with that. Now that I have this, um, right now, let's go ahead and group this back bad boy back up. So right now, it's at 12.3 inches and our thing is a 9 by 13. So I want this at about 11 and a half inches. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to lock aspect ratio. And I want this to be at 11.5. And that's going to shrink it down. All right. Now all we need to do, you guys, is we need to cut this on vinyl. Because we want this um, here, this inside, to be vinyl. Because I'm going to be painting white along this outer edge here. And then the blue is going to be on the inside here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this with traditional vinyl, not to be confused with the um, square one masterpiece that I'm going to be using later in this video. Um, this is just traditional vinyl because I'm going to be painting over it and just throwing it away. Um, so this, I'm going to come up here to my cut settings. I'm going to come over here to change cut settings. 
I'm gonna go down here and we're gonna hit vinyl, make sure we change it to a two and we're ready to cut. So there is our design, which we'll be using as our template. As you can see, after we welded it, it goes all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the silhouette. And then I'm going to go ahead and start weeding it out so we can go ahead and all spray right, paint. So what it seems paint. after a year, um, we finally have everything done there and as you can see there is going to be our snowflake template that goes around our plaque um, and the nice thing about this you guys is you don't want to be too perfect on the snowflakes when you're positioning them because you kind of want it to be random and kind of all over the place and then I am using a Rust-Oleum Universal Paint and Primer in one high gloss white for the snow so I'm going to lay my template over my spray painted blue plaque. I'm going to make sure the seal is really good and then we're going to go ahead and spray this gloss white over that. Let it dry really good and then we should be good we should be ready to design the plaque. Alright so we have the plaque finished. We've painted our base coat and our snowflakes. Our next step is to design Olaf and once we've designed him we're going to go ahead and print him on this adhesive fabric. It is Square One Masterpiece. It's an alternative to vinyl. What's great about this is you can actually go into the Silhouette software, design your piece, put your registration marks on your mat, and then go ahead and print this out with your cut lines. Um, what makes it better than vinyl? Number one, it's eco-friendly. There is no hazard to the environment. Number two, what I like about it is it's repositionable. So you don't have to worry about getting it right the first time. You don't have to worry about um, putting it on the wall and then trying to take a razor blade to get it off. Um, and the other thing I like about it, the few times I've used it on walls, there's been no ripples, no bubbles that I had to worry about. So it's a really great product. Um, I'm going to be doing a separate video on this, so make sure to check back on my channel to look at the review video on the Square One Masterpiece. So let's go ahead and design Olaf. Once we've designed him, we're going to go ahead and print on this material. When you print on this material, you want to make sure you use the fabric setting because it is a fabric. It is not vinyl. That's really important. Um, and then once we have Olaf designed and printed, we'll go ahead and put them on our plaque. Now that our plaque is drying, we have a little bit of time on our hands. Uh, reason why is we have now put two coats of paint on that plaque with a snowflake template. And we don't want to peel that off for a good hour. If we do, it will peel off some of the extra paint and our snowflakes will not look like snowflakes. And we don't want that. So I would recommend giving it about an hour to dry. What are we going to do in that hour? Well, we need to design Olaf. Olaf is from one of my favorite movies, Disney's Frozen. If you have not seen Disney's Frozen, I recommend you go out and rent the movie because it is now on DVD and watch it. It's amazing. I love it. I love everything about it. I love the songs. And this whole project is inspired by Olaf, which is a snowman. And we can all sing, do you want to build a snowman? Ride our bikes around the hall. Okay, moving on. I know you guys aren't here to hear me sing, but I really do love the movie. Anyways, if you go over to www.ppbndesigns.com, uh, they've done a great, great job designing a Frozen set. So if you come over here to the SVG sets and click here, it's going to bring up all of Nikki's sets. And the very, very first one is the Snow Queen set, which is, shh, it's the Frozen set. But I don't think we can say Frozen because it's copyrighted. So it's the Snow Queen set. And there's our little quote unquote snowman and that's what we're doing is the snowman here so this is our whole project here and there's all of our characters that we will be using so I am gonna go ahead I've already downloaded this but I need to download it to this computer so I'm going to sign into my account here which it's already hmm someone comes on this side a lot if it already remembers me Whew. All right, so I am signed in. Here's my completed orders. I'm going to go here. And down here is, dun, 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 where is it? Snow Queen set. 
Download files. Now on here you're going to see a Snow Queen set and a no Snow Queen revise. Make sure you download the revise set um, because uh, there was uh, some stuff that she, Nikki had to revise on the set so you want to make sure you're getting the best set. So we're going to go ahead and click the revise set. It's downloading to my computer. That is so exciting. Now that it's on my computer I'm going to click and drag it onto my desktop. All right, we can close this down. We're gonna bring my Silhouette Studio up. And I already have a PPBN folder, so I'm gonna go ahead and add another folder in there. And I'm going to put Snow Queen set, AKA the word, I don't even, I don't even know if I can say that word. I hope I'm not getting in any trouble. Copyrights are so scary sometimes. So there's my Snow Queen set. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on here and I am just going to click and drag all of my SVG files into there. And then um, you also can um, click on the instructions that Nikki has given to you so that way you know exactly how to build these um, because there is a lot of pieces. So if you want those I would definitely recommend having those ready to go which we will do if we were making a paper file but in this case we are going to be doing um, using our new Square One Media. All right, now that I have my Olaf here, we're going to go ahead and click Mr. Olaf. And there he is. And I want Olaf to be seven and a half inches tall. So right now, if I was to bring him up to my ruler, he's a about six inches with that little blue thing below him. So I'm going to go ahead and bring him, I'm going to lock my aspect ratio, and I'm going to bring him up to about 13 inches. And that is going to bring him right to about seven inches. Okay, now we have a couple different options at this point. If you don't have the square one printable fabric, you can print this with regular vinyl. You would just need to get all the different colors and you could print this or cut this with vinyl. Since I'm using the square one printable uh, fabric, I'm going to go ahead and get Olaf layered and then group him all together and then I'm going to go ahead and print and cut him using this new square one uh, printable media. Um, and that way I'm only doing one cut of Olaf. I'm not cutting all these individual pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to group him all together, get him all pieced, and then we will go ahead and print it. So what I'm going to do here, because I'm going to be using um, him as a layering, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the instructions because, you know, instructions are amazing. So I'm going to bring those up and there it is just in case Ken needs them and then just ungroup it. And if you guys just want to watch, I'm going to go and start putting it together.
All right, now that we have them mostly constructed, um, I wanted to show you right here, as you can see, his lines, um, I will change from the red. I'm not wild about doing it the black color, so I'm actually going to change the line color to more of this color of his skin. Um, and you can do that by doing this dropper here, and you just go to any of this gray, and that will kind of get um, to where you don't see that line. So as you can see, if we zoom in here, you can still see a little bit of that line right here. And um, the only way to get rid of that is from uh, because of the way I moved him. So we're going to actually ungroup him. I'm going to move his head down a little bit because I don't really like that line there. So let me go ahead and do that, and then we'll put this. All right, now that we have Olaf all cleaned up there and I got rid of those lines as best as I could, um, there he is. I also moved him a little bit lower down on his blue um, circle at the bottom here. Um, we do need to make sure he has some cut lines. Make sure he you draw a box all around him after he's grouped and put a cut line around the cut edge just like that and that's if you're doing the square one media like I am and he is ready to go so we do need to set up our page the square one masterpiece is a you can get it in a 12 by 12 sheet but I print on an eight and a half by eleven we want to make sure our registration marks are on there and then I just want to position him all off here in the middle of the page now when I'm going to print this it's really important to follow the instructions on the square one masterpiece package you're gonna to want to print this as if it was a matte non glossy finish so make sure to change your paper settings from regular paper to a matte non shiny finish I wasted a whole half of a day because I could not get this to work for me. Every time I was cutting Olaf, he was either off, he was not cutting right, something was wrong, and I realized it's because I was not putting a matte, non-glossy finish. And it dawned on me, oh my goodness, if you read the instructions, amazing things happen. So I'm going to save you guys the headache right now. If you're using the Square One Masterpiece, make sure it is loaded into your printer. It's by itself you don't want a whole stack of these in there you don't want a whole bunch of paper in there just one sheet in there make sure it's on the right settings of that matte photo paper and then go ahead and print it at the highest quality once you have it printed make sure to let it dry for two minutes and once it's ready and it's dried go ahead and detect the um, registration marks and then it will print like magic this stuff is amazing you guys so let's go ahead and print this bad boy out. We're going to go ahead and print it. Make sure to go to media and quality. We're going to make sure that it is a photo paper and it is on its best. And I'm going to do it from the rear tray because I only have one of these. And then we're going to go ahead and print this. All right, and then when we're done printing, you guys, let's go ahead and um, cut it on our machine. So a couple things before we detect the registration marks. Because this has a backing on it, it does not require a mat. And we also had to change our rollers because it's 13 by 9. Now that we have that set up, we're going to go ahead and try to get the registration marks, and then we will cut it. So let's go ahead and check for registration marks. And it detected them okay, so we're going to go ahead and cut it. To do our sentiment we need to download the font into our silhouette software 
Unfortunately, Disney copyrights most of their font, so we can't actually look up a frozen font. However, I found one that is pretty close. So if you go to Google and you type in Sinzel font, C-I-N-Z-E-L font, it's going to bring you to Google's font. And this one got pretty close to what I was looking for. So we're going to go ahead and open, open this in Google fonts. I want the ultra bold. And then I'm going to go over here to where this little pointing down arrow is, and I'm going to download it as a zip file. Once it downloads as a zip file, I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And as you can see here, it's right there. I'm going to go ahead and install the font. And then once the font is installed, we can open up our Silhouette software. You want to make sure that you install the font before opening up your Silhouette Studio software because if your software is open and you try installing the font, it's not going to show up. So install the font first and then open up your Studio software. Once you've done that, we just go over here to the left side here. Up here, make sure we have our text. Go down to Sinzel font. Sinzel, sizzle, sinzel. And then I'm just going to type some people are worth melting for exclamation point exclamation point I'm gonna unclick it click it again this was centered at 48 inches there it is and then all we're going to do guys is we're gonna come up here to where this offset is and I'm just gonna select offset I'm gonna hit apply I'm gonna move this out of the way click this again and release the compound path and then I can get rid of all of these other little things in here and then we're gonna go ahead and cut this piece here on brown vinyl once we are done we're gonna then cut this piece here on white vinyl so why don't we go ahead and cut both of these pieces using brown vinyl for this piece so brown vinyl on this guy white vinyl on this guy. Make sure you change your settings here when you go to cut it. You want to make sure you change it to your vinyl settings. So make sure you come down here, select vinyl, and change it to a tube blade, and then go ahead and cut it. Once we got those cut, let's put this bad boy together. It's time to let you go. Ha ha ha. <laughs> that was so funny. Anyways, there is the finished plaque. You have Mr. Olaf there. You can get Olaf and all of his happy little friends over at PPBN Designs, which you can get their website at www.ppbndesigns.com. Make sure you're following my blog over at www dot creative ken dot blogspot dot com make sure to check out this new product you can check this stuff out it's square one masterpiece it's www dot square one masterpiece dot com and make sure you guys are checking out all my youtube videos for more projects i'll have a lot more projects coming from pp bn designs and scrappy do so make sure you guys check back for all of my projects coming up on ken's creations channel all right, thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. Make sure to go watch Frozen. It's a great movie. All right, bye guys. <laughs>